Chúng ta sẽ đến Viện Hải Dương Danapoa và xin phép ông Art cho tìm hiểu về hoạt động của cơ sở này. Well, my name's Art. I work at the Ocean Institute, and I'd like to give you a little guided tour of the Ocean Institute. We're an Ocean Institute of uh, Dana Point. We're an educational facility, and uh, we have over 100,000 students that participate in our various programs throughout the year. We also have uh, uh, RV Explorer, which is a research vessel. We have also have the Spirit of Dana Point, which is also a schooner, and we also have the Pilgrim, which is also a uh, history of Dana Point with uh, two years before the mass. It's a replica. It's called the Pilgrim, and we have a lot of programs on that. Our programs go out throughout the year. We have various schools in the area that come to the Ocean Institute and participate in our educational programs from living at sea programs to small child programs too, as well too. Our, our institute is open on the weekends only to the public and it's open from like 9 till 3 o'clock on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, the rest of the week, Monday through Fridays, we have educational programs that go here at the Ocean Institute with our local schools and we even have uh, programs and program schools that come from even out of the state of California that come into the programs here too. So I um, welcome you to the Ocean Institute today. I would like to give you a little tour on what's, what some things are going on at the Ocean today. Uh, this is one of our main attractions of the Ocean Institute. It's called Gracie. This is a yearling of our uh, California gray whale. And since this is migration time right now, when the migration of whales are actually heading back up north, uh, this is a great attraction of the Ocean Institute, one of our great instructional aids of the Ocean Institute. It shows a, a California gray whale yearling, uh, which uh, can get be up to about 45 to 50 tons. Uh, and it's a yearling gray whale, and it shows the migration, uh, helps with our migration instructions we have. This yearling was found in Huntington Beach, and actually washed ashore around 1976, 77, and it was missing its tails, which we call its flukes. Um, and it went to the Bowers Museum for a period of time, and then we gave it to the Ocean Institute. Uh, it's a really funny story about the Gracie because we had a contest with the school children of naming the gray whale and all names came up so it seemed to be very appropriate for this whale to be named Gracie. Okay, this is our at sea lab situation. Our labs are set up for individual instructions of the Ocean Institute. This is one of our, our famous ones here. This is our ocean drift as we call this, this is our moon jellies. And the moon jellies are one of our famous, we have our uh, aquarist that comes in in the afternoon and does our feedings for the aquarist and then answers a lot of questions. Our head aquarist, Julianne Sears, is probably our walking excitement of the Ocean Institute and she gives instructions to our and to the uh, students of the Ocean Institute, students that, that come here for educational purposes. This is probably one of our most popular areas of also of the Ocean Institute. This is called our Ecology Building. In our Ecology Building, we have instructions on different tanks and types of invertebrate animals. As you can see, what I have here is one of our Nobby Sea Stars. And our Nobby Sea Stars is a tank in which uh, students can come in, it's a touch tank. So they actually come in, we ask that they wash their hands with water first and clear anything they might have in the hand. They can actually come in and, and actually pick up the starfish, uh, touch it, actually not pick it up, but they, it's in a tank. And we have a volunteer here that actually gives them instructions on how to touch it just two fingers and look at the two feet and they also give over some instructions about types of sea stars as well too. So as I put this back, put this back on the inside here, put this in. So so we have the tank and we have, uh, we give instructions on the sea stars is actually um, that they're, what they do, what they eat, we have a feeding goes on here as well too. So one of good areas, a good area for instructions for small ch children. This is one of our special presentations on the, during the Whale Festival. It's called our Bone Lab. And during the Bone Lab, as you can see our table here, we have a lot of different displays of, of bones. And we have actually have one whale skeleton set out here. And uh, what uh, our public's gonna come and do is it says, can you guess what bone you're looking at? So they actually will try to guess bones from the Bone Labs of whales. And we have it set up. Uh, we have drawings here. Uh, this is a really good description of types of whales there are. As you know, there are two groups of whales. There's whales that have teeth and there's whales that have baleens. And so 
we have this to show the public and demonstration about how large whales really are compared to man and compared. As you know, our blue whales are the largest whale that's living on Earth right now. Uh, we also talk about echolocation. Echolocation is a means by which uh, our, our tooth whales find food. And we also have uh, vocalization and communication by uh, baleen whales as well, too. So this lab is set up during a, our special presentation for the Whale Festival. And we have, this is manned by one of our staff that will come here and they engage the public, try to guess the bones of the different whales. And uh, it's, it's been a really good, really popular lab uh, for, during the Whale Festival. Phía bên kia, phòng thí nghiệm của Viện Hải Dương là con tàu Pin Green dài 130 feet. Con tàu này trở nên nổi tiếng kể từ khi nhà văn Richard Dana đưa nó vào trong tác phẩm Two Years Beyond the Mars, sáng tác vào năm 1830. Kể từ năm 1981, Pin Green đã cho chúng ta cái nhìn về cuộc sống lan bạc của những thủy thủ lên đên trên sóng nước. What do you think? Triangle. Triangle, yes, like these. Triangular sails, typically fore and aft using the Bernoulli principle to make propulsion. What other shapes? Square. Square. Typically uh, does use the Bernoulli principle, but more acts like a kite pretty much. And uh, it's called uh, a square sail versus a fore and aft sail like this. What other shapes? You lay on first, you say, uh, I'm mad in the rigging. Mr. Contestable? Aye. And you get an eye response, which is hopefully enthusiastic. <laughs> Make your way up. Always three points of contact. So you've got a hand on a vertical, a foot on a horizontal. That way no one steps on your hands. And you move a hand, move a foot, move a hand, move a foot. Oh, don't step on your uh, little clippy. Hand and then a foot, 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 hand and then a foot. And then a foot. Oh. Well, does anyone know what I'm doing right now? Making figure eight. Like Why? So it doesn't knot? So it doesn't knot because this is the downhaul. And when we haul on the uphaul, this is going to go, and we want to make sure that it goes evenly and fairly. So, pull that here. This is used for uh, making a shape in the sail. Being a fore and aft sail, it doesn't work necessarily by catching the wind, but by dividing the wind into two groups, the wind on this side and the wind on this side. Now, when it makes a curve, it functions like an airplane wing. Being on the inside of the curve makes a high pressure system. And on the, low, on the outside of the curve, it makes a low pressure system, which creates lift. The Bernoulli principle, the Venturi effect, whatever you want to call it, it's how carburetors, planes, and sailing vessels work. Now, as you can see, there is uh, no curve. So the sail is not doing much because there is no weather. Now we can also use the other sheet on the other side. Đây là một bài học khoa học thú vị về Bernoulli principle. Trong phần 2 của chương trình du lịch cùng với Trang Extravel, chúng ta sẽ được gặp thuyền trưởng đây về những chú cá voi Dolphin Safari.